Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to interface with a DHT11 sensor with your MicroPython code. We will also create our very own weather station that displays the current sensor readings coming from the DHT11 and it gets updated asynchronously in real time. We will display the sensor readings as a gauge data visualization chart whose value, as you can see, changes depending on the values that are being read by the DHT11 sensor. The weather station is built using microdot library that acts as our web server. The DHT11 sensor comes in standalone or in module form. I am using the module form which is engraved in a PCB together with other components. The usual pinout is the following, wherein a signal, a BCC, and a ground are exposed. This might be different from module to module, so you would have to check the setup of your DHT11 sensor module. The schematic and wiring are really simple. Since the DHT11 already has a digital output, then we can connect it to any of the GPIO pins of our microcontroller. In my case in here, I am using an ESP32 MicroPython board. The operating voltage is from 3.3 volts to 5 volts. So we are connecting it to the 3.3 volts of our ESP32 microcontroller. I am using GPIO pin 22 as my data signal pin. It is easy to read this DHT11 sensor in MicroPython as this is the only code that you will ever need. As you can see, you just have to declare a DHT pin. So we are passing our GPIO22 and then we just call our DHT sensor that measure method. And then after calling the dot measure, then we are able to extract the temperature and the humidity of our DHT11 sensor reads. Let's try this one. So, I'm just going to run the script. As you can see, I am able to retrieve the temperature and the humidity settings that was read by our DHT11 sensor. If we try to hold the DHT11 sensor, and then let's verify if something will change. So right now it's 32 and 68. So the humidity already changed from 68 to 71 to 73 to 74. So it means that by holding the DHT11 sensor pin, then the relative humidity already changed. It's that easy, right? Now, as we are able to read this DHT sensor using our MicroPython code, then let us make it a little bit more exciting by making our own DHT11 MicroPython powered weather station. The design is here. So as you can see, I have created a micro dot powered web server that displays its data in a gauge chart that was built using the Plotly JavaScript library. This chart gets updated asynchronously every 3 seconds and it continually reads the sensor reading from our DHT11. The code for this project is available in my GitHub repository and the complete write-up is in my blog. You will both See this in the description of this video. So, let's try running this project. I'm just going to do a soft reboot. So, I just sent a soft reboot. As you can see, I now have here an IP address that was assigned to our ESP32 MicroPython device. Let's use this IP address and then let's go to our browser. And then type in the port, which is the port 5000. And as you would notice, the default value is now 0. But after 3 seconds, then you would see that 
the temperature and the humidity readings from our THT11 is now being shown by our weather station. Let's try holding again the DHT11 and then verify if our web application will change. So I'm just going to hold it for some time. And then as you can see, the humidity readings have already changed. So from 68, it's now 74. Let's wait for some time. So the temperature already changed also from 32 to 33. So it means that our DHT11 sensor was able to pass the sensor readings into our web server application. So I'm going to remove my hand from holding the DHT11. And as you could see, the humidity settings has now changed. So let's now try to explain a little bit about how this code works. So, the first file that we're going to use is the DHT module.py. So I'm just going to interrupt the execution. And this file contains the class which is the DHT module. As you can see, we initialize our pin in here with the same code that I have already shown you before, which is the DHT11, and it contains a method called getValues. In the getValues method, you would notice that I have I have been calling the sensor that measure method also, and I am retrieving the same method temperature and humidity values from our DHT11 sensor. And as you would notice, these two values are now being returned by this method. The next file that we're going to check is the main.py. In the main.py, I have a route here called update values. This route is called whenever a request is coming in from our web application, to get the latest DHT11 sensor readings. Then, as you would notice in this route, it calls the DHT sensor that get values. So I have here the get values. So if we check, the get values is being called by this get DHT sensor that get values command. And then whatever the values coming from our web application is now being returned as a JSON response using this live package called uJSON. If you are not familiar with this micro dot setup, then I highly suggest that you read and view my earlier videos about micro dot. I will put it also in the description of this video. The other route that we have here is our root route, which, it, which renders our index.html. Our index.html contains the user interface of our weather station and is served by the index route. It contains the HTML structure whose important elements is these two divs below, the temperature div and the humidity div. As you would notice, the temperature div and the humidity div does not contain any code in here. That's because the, the graph or the gauge that be, that is being drawn is done through another file called the index.js. The index.js basically is the, the file that is being called when our web page loads. In this file, you would notice that there is methods here that calls plat. Plotly, by the way, is the JavaScript library that we are using to draw the, our gauge. And it is you, by calling the new plot method, then we are able to draw the temperature div and the humidity div. The details about the, uh, how Plotly works is explained in the description, in, it's in the companion write-up of this video. There is also this specific method called update plot, which in this case is called whenever we want to update our chart. As you can see, 
we are I am using the patch API and I am calling the backslash update values endpoint. This update values corresponds to the update values also in my main.py. And upon receiving the values of our temperature and our humidity, then we call another function in the Plotly JavaScript API that updates our gauge. The last functions that you would see in here is, called, is, is configured to run every 3 seconds. And what this function is doing is that it will call our update plot every 3 seconds. The other files that you are seeing in here, which are the CSS files, are just for styling purpose and they just beautify our index.html page so that it will look good. The other important files are the micro dot specific files, which are the files that we need to use to be able to create a micro dot web server. The other videos that I, I have another another videos that explains how to create a micro dot web web server the easy way. I put also the link in that video in the description of this video. That is all about how Discord works. The companion write-up of this video will explain you further how this code works. I hope you find this project exciting. And if there are any questions or something is not clear, then ask me in the comment section of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!